Christian Assembly of God, located at Turkey Creek, Kentucky, a local body of believers with a worldwide vision of reaching the lost with the message of the cross. Through the leadership of pastors Danny and Jason Michaels, along with the ministry of the church's praise team, the name of Jesus Christ is glorified.
He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Amen. Verse 30. We're going to focus on this one partly today. Verse 30. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. Verse 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Now, I want you to repeat this with me again like we repeated it last week. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. We should not take this scripture in Isaiah lightly. This is a promise from God that he will never leave us nor forsake us. Hallelujah. But in order to apply this scripture to our life, we have to do something ourselves. Hallelujah. You have to mount up. Hallelujah. You, you, you have to take your position. Praise God. You have to take your position in his word and follow his guidance. Amen. Praise God. We just want to shout hallelujah that we can mount up, that we can just, we can soar, we can fly. But hallelujah, first you got to do something for yourself. You're going to have to mount up. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this day, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your word, God. We thank you, Lord, for your awesome presence, Lord, we've already felt here today, Lord. Use us, Lord. Touch us, Lord. We open up our hearts and minds, God, that we will receive something from you, God, and we're never failed to praise you and give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Before, before we go any further today, I want to recognize some people that are watching on uh, the Internet. Sister Sandy Adams, she's watched us faithfully for, I believe, over a year now, and it was about two or three weeks ago before we started studying for this sermon of Sister Sandy she sent me a card, and she doesn't know this. I haven't sent her a message back yet, but I say she'll be watching this. She sent me a card, hallelujah, and in that card was Isaiah 40 and 31. Yeah. Praise God. God. Hallelujah. And I appreciate her so much for her words of encouragement. We thank her for her support and her prayers. Praise God. Give her a great big hand. Hallelujah. Yeah. We appreciate her so much. Amen. And all those that watch on the internet from several different states. Uh, not just states, but countries, hallelujah. We're being watched in other countries in India. Uh, one in particular that watches us a lot in the Philippines, they watch us a lot. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand for that too. Yeah. Yeah. I've never been to the Philippines and I've never been to India, but the word of God is being preached from this pulpit in India and the Philippines. That's amazing. Yeah. One of the things that we need to understand about the eagle, and we touched on this last week, is that the eagle is one of the most majestic birds in the sky. With its great wingspan, we talked about that. It has, uh, it's such a powerful bird that it can see for miles. It can fly at such great heights. The eagle has the ability to fly so high that the storm cannot even hinder its flight. We need, we need to grab a hold of that. That the storm cannot even hinder its flight. When the storms of life come, hallelujah, they should not hinder your walk with God. Praise God. They should not hinder uh, what you have been called to do. It should not hinder your faith in, in, in nail-scarred hands. It should not hinder the crown of thorns and the bruise, the beaten side. It should not hinder a healing in your life. Hallelujah. When the storms of life come. Come because the eagle, it can fly over the top of the storm. What an amazing comparison that God gives us that the eagle, a mount, we can mount up with wings as the eagle. We can be so close to God. We can be so overwhelmed with his great love for us that even when the storms of life are raging, we have a God that can guide us above the storm. Praise God. Mount up with wings as eagles. Hallelujah. You serve an awesome, all-knowing, ever-loving God, never changing, that hung the world on nothing and said, let there be light, and bam, there was light. This God was the same God that was with Daniel in the lion's den. Praise God. And those lions became 
their, his pillow. And God didn't leave Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in a fiery furnace. Hallelujah. Who became that fourth man. Praise God. He will be your fourth man. Hallelujah. He won't leave you in the fire. He won't leave you in the flood. He won't leave you in the disasters of life. But you got to mount up. Hallelujah. I want to soar like the eagle, you may say. Mount up. Mount up. Praise God. This God rained fire down from heaven. This God flung the stars into the space and spoke the worlds into existence. This God promises to never leave you nor forsake you. He'll go all the way with you, even to the end of the world. Hallelujah. But this God knows you need the valley just as much as you need the mountain. Let's say that again. God knows how much you need the valley. Hallelujah. As much as you need that mountain. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because in the valley, you're changed. You're molded. You're made new. Your ego can't stay with you in the valley. You don't feel strong and mighty in the valley. But God declares in his word in Corinthians, for we are glad when we are weak and ye are strong. Come on. For we are glad when we are weak, ye are strong. For it is in the weak times when God shows himself strong. Praise God. Praise God. We serve a strong, mighty God. Amen. Amen. A strong, mighty God. For it's in the weak times, hallelujah, when he'll carry you, hallelujah. For it's in the times you can't walk yourself. God will walk for you, hallelujah. For it is in the times when you can't carry your load, hallelujah. Cast all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. Praise God. He's a mighty God. Amen. Come on. Eagles, at least once in their lifetime, they molt. In the life of every eagle, they will go through this molting process. And this molting process will bring a period of great depression and sorrow. Some eagles will even die in their molting period. This is a wilderness experience that the eagle will face. Uh, this valley is something that uh, we will have to face. It's just simply part of the eagle's life. Something they will have to go through if they continue to live. Yeah. I'm born again, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. If they ever spread their wings again, if they ever soar again, they must face this valley. Yeah. This is simply part of life for Isaiah 40 and 30. We've quoted it. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men, they shall utterly fall. Isaiah is declaring that it doesn't matter what stage of life you are in. You will have times when there's trouble. Yes. This is certain in your life. This is certain. But valleys, they should be temporary. Amen. Praise God. That's what we're ministering on today. We're ministering on the subject, the valley is temporary. That's the way we should live life, hallelujah. A temporary valley, not a permanent valley. It's not where we should stay. Valleys help to mold and shape us. It's who we are. But valleys should be temporary. We shouldn't camp out in our sorrow. Amen. Valleys help to mold and shape who we are. But valleys are temporary. Because Psalms declare, weeping may endure for a night. But joy cometh in the morning. Uh, this valley is temporary, church. You, you may see me in sorrow today, but I'm coming out because joy is coming in the morning. Hallelujah. Certain eagles, they live for about 30 years or more, and they begin to lose their feathers. How does this happen, you may say? Oil and debris and, 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 and bugs, they begin to attach themselves to the eagle's feathers. This eagle is known as a great fierce hunter and the oil and the debris and the bugs, they weigh the feathers down of the eagle and, and, and the eagle begins to make a sound as it comes in after their prey and it warns their prey that the eagle is coming. Things are changing. Hallelujah. The eagle slows down. It loses its effectiveness to hunt. The eagle that was once swift and agile in flight begins to lose a step. Are you with me today? Yeah. 
just like the athlete that is at the top of their game, the MVP, the champion, begins to lose a step. He can no longer jump as high as he used to. He can no longer run as fast as he used to. This becomes frustrating to this athlete, but this is just simply a part of life. Can we compare this Christian experience all happy and free and all of a sudden there's a bump in our road. We stop raising our hands. We stop lifting our voice. But the drummer quits playing. The guitar player quits strumming. The piano player quits. The bass player quits. And before you know it, there's no band. You're cold and you're callous for the things of God. But valleys become permanent in that life. They become permanent. Please don't die in your valley today. Please don't let go in your valley. Please don't lose hope in the valley. Please don't lose it in the valley because the same God that's with you on the mountain, he'll be with you in the valley. Hallelujah. The athlete begins to lose a step. Hallelujah. Begins to be a little bit slower. Hallelujah. Praise God. But don't die in your valley. What we must understand about the eagle is that the eagle has a beak and claws, and, and in this valley they alter as well. The experts tell us that during this time the eagle will walk like a turkey. Yeah. I don't want to be a turkey. <laughs> they call them things, those little things that should have had ducks probably have them though. But you get that little thing and the turkey comes walking and bam. soar like the eagle can soar for the eagle can soar above the clouds and the storms of life but this is not the turkey Amen. hallelujah we're next, next week I can't wait it's going to be so fun we're going to talk about different birds in the church <laughs> some people are peacocks and some people are dodo birds <laughs> it's going to be funny I don't want to be one of those. I want to be an eagle, don't you? Can you imagine this great creature that once soared over the valley is now walking in the valley? Have you ever been there? You were once, hallelujah, on top of the mountain, and then now you're in the valley low. The eagle has such great vision that it can see both forward and to the sides at the same time. The eagle can see fish swimming in the water from several uh, uh, several feet below as it is still flying. For the for blinking, the eagle has an inner eyelid called the nictitating membrane. Every three or four seconds, this membrane slides across the eye from front to back, wiping dirt and dust from the cornea because the membrane of the uh, of the nictating membrane. It is translucent. The eagle can see while it is over its eye. Just think how God created this bird. An eagle eye is almost as large as a human eye, but its sharpness is at least four times that of a person with perfect vision. The eagle can probably identify a rabbit moving almost a mile away. That means that an eagle flying at an altitude of over a thousand feet over open country could spot prey over, over a three mile area from a fixed position. But in the valley, they lose their ability to see like they once saw. The things they used to be able to see, the things they used to be able to interpret with their vision, they can no longer interpret. Their vision weakens. What they used to be able to see is no longer visible. They can see for miles, but now in their valley, their vision has weakened, and all they see is the wilderness. All they see is the wilderness. 
Does this sound like the Christian with the weak vision, unable to see the hand of God moving in their life, unable to see God moving in their family, unable to see God save their loved ones, unable to see God in the valley? Yes. The valleys are supposed to be temporary. That's right. Calcium builds upon their beaks and they can't even hold their heads up anymore. Come on. They can't. Woo, this is just like us. When we get in the valley, we can't see ourselves lifting our hands and glorifying God like we used to glorify Him. We're in the valley. Hallelujah. Get out of your valley. It's temporary. God meant for you to soar. God meant for you to praise. Hallelujah. He meant for you to worship. He meant for you to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. He meant for you to not uh, just uh, begin to praise when everybody else praises. He meant for you to start to praise. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let me break this service loose today. I'll be the one to start to praise. I'll make a loud noise. Hallelujah. I'm not in the valley. Hallelujah. I'm coming out of the valley. Praise God. Now this is so traumatic to the great eagle, this proud, majestic bird. They lose their desire to eat. He is the bread of life and he's the living water. They only eat fresh meat, the eagle, and they have no strength now to even hunt in their valley. But then another phenomenon takes place when the molting eagle uh, in its last state, oftentimes they will begin to peck on each other, occasionally killing another molting eagle as they gather together in one place. Does it sound like someone in the valley? Yeah. I'm dying, and I'll kill you. I'll kill your spirit because I'm dying myself. Praise God trying to kill another brother or sister going through their valley. Church, the valley is temporary. We are not called to bring another brother or sister down. That's right. Praise God. We are called to build them up, yeah. to encourage them, yeah. to hold them up. You can't lift your head up. I'll lift it up for you. Yeah. You're not coming to church. Here, a CD. You'll listen to the word of God on your way to work. Yeah. Amen. I won't let you die in your valley. See it here. Let me remind you of the Savior. Let me remind you of the Redeemer. Let me remind you of the chain breaker. Let me remind you of the deliverer. Let me remind you of nail scarred hands. Let me remind you of a crown of thorns. Let me remind you of a bruised, beaten body of the Savior that bore stripes on his back, wore a crown of thorns he didn't deserve. The one that said, It is finished, and the veil of the, uh, the temple was torn so that you and I could come into his presence with joy and gladness. Sit down. I know you're in your back. But God's about to pick you up. Listen to this. At this time, they will choose some area of the valley where the sun can shine. This is those that want to come out of the valley. They will choose an area where the sun can shine directly on them. And they will lie on a rock and bathe sun. They'll bathe in the sun. How are you going to get out of the valley? Soak up the sun. How are you going to get out of the turmoil of life? Soak up the sun, baby. How are you going to get out of depression and disease? Soak up the sun, baby. How are you going to get out of the mully grubs of life when everything's weighing you down? Soak up the sun. During this time, some have even observed other eagles coming over top of the valley and dropping food to the ones going through the molting stage. You see, it's never the younger eagles that drop the food. It's always the older eagles that have survived this experience. And they know what the molting eagle is going through. They know the depression. They know the hurt. 
They know the heartache. They know the pain that this evil is going through. And this eagle that's been through the valley and has come out of the valley, the eagle that soared with its wings above the valley has caught some squirrels or caught some rabbits and it begins to drop it down to the eagle going through this molting period. Praise God. Hallelujah. I need somebody in my life that's went through the valley. I need somebody in my life that didn't stay in the valley. I need somebody in my life that went through the valley. Hallelujah. And said, if God be for me, then who can be against me? I won't die in my valley because the valley is temporary. It's just for a moment. It's just for a season. I'll take this time and I'll let God change me. I'll let God mold me. But thank God there's somebody up there. Hallelujah. He's looking out for me. He's flying over. He's dropping down food for me. Hallelujah. He's the bread of life. Hallelujah. He's the living water. He's the true vine. He's the alpha, the omega. Just dropping it down. Praise God. They say that this is one of the most pathetic sights you will ever see. Four or five eagles molting in the valley where they once would only soar over to look for fresh kill. They were once a massive creature, a hunter. If they don't renew, they will die. They grow weaker and weaker. Suddenly there comes a sound from the sky over the valley. Screaming loudly, another group of eagles fly overhead and they drop this meat over for the dying birds. Hallelujah. They scream, hallelujah, with this loud call. They, they just they scream with everything within them for encouragement for the other eagles who have already gone through this valley. It's a sound of encouragement, hallelujah, telling those struggling eagles, eat, eat, gain your strength. I once was where you are today, and I won't let you die in the wilderness. This is the way we must be with those lost That's it. in the wilderness. Sit down and let me read this to you. Greater love hath no man than this. He was wounded for our sit down. And let me tell you that old, old story. How a Savior came from glory. How he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. Let me tell you about Psalm 23. The Lord, he's your shepherd. You shall not want. Hallelujah. He'll make a way for you where there seems to be. He'll make of me lie down in green pastures. He restoreth my soul. I won't let you die. Listen to the word of God today. I won't let you die. Take that out of your CD player. Put this in your CD player. I won't let you die in the wilderness. Listen to last week's sermon. Listen to the praise team. I did not walk on the water. Listen to this song. Hallelujah. God's for you. It's church time. Let's get in the car. I won't let you die without God. You're not going to die in your wilderness with me around. You'll not die in your wilderness with the child of God around, the blood ball child of the king. You can't die. Hallelujah. We're called to lift them up. I won't let you be a slave to sin. We need church. We need a congregation that won't let our loved ones die in the valley. Hallelujah. You know somebody today that's dying in their valley. You're watching them every week, every time you speak with them, every time you have a conversation with them, you see them dying in the valley. Church, we can't let our friends and our family and our loved ones and our coworkers die in their valley. It's not an option to live without God. If you're around me, you're going to feel the presence of God. You will be exposed to this gospel, whether you like it or not. I won't let you leave this world without Jesus. Praise God. So the birds, they fly over top of the valley, and they're dropping their food. Oh, you can hear the sound, this loud sound encouraging them. Eat, eat, don't die. In the wilderness. Right. So the eagles dropping the food, they make this loud cry 
gain your strength or you die. Some eat and recover, but others roll over and die. It's a tragedy that we should never let happen. Some roll over and die. Don't you think this speaks of something in our Christian lives as well? There's a time in life for the Christian believer when it looks as though everything is stripped away. But God didn't call us to die. See, in Christian lives, there will be valleys. It's not always a mountaintop experience. It's not always soaring in the heavens. Peter, James, and John were privileged to join the Lord in, in, on the mountaintop. And he led them up to a high mountain. But you see, we're not always on the mountain. There's times of valleys. The eagle loses its desire to eat. They should be eating. They need to be eating now more than ever. But they lose all desire. Isn't this true of us sometimes? In the state we find ourselves, we lose even the desire for the food of God's word. We're dying in the wilderness. In the church and the things of God seem to be the farthest from our mind. Number three, the eagle's vision begins to go. The eagle is so inspired in its vision that it can see things from miles away, and its vision is like no other bird. But while in this state of the wilderness, in this molting period, we are told that the eagle begins to lose vision. Proverbs 29 and 18 says, where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keeps his law, happy is he. This happens to the eagle in the time of moment. Number four, calcium builds up on the beast, and they find themselves always looking down never looking up. The beak palaced and begins to point inward, not allowing the eagle to even open its mouth. And the eagle gets to this rock and it begins to beat its beak upon this rock, trying to break the callus, hallelujah, the hard covering, so that it can begin to eat fresh food that the eagles above have dropped for it to eat. You see, there's some Something you have to do for yourself sometimes. Number five, the ego begins to help itself. They scratch their own claws until they are down to nothing, so they will grow new again. They will knock the beaks until the calcium that was weighing them down falls off. Some will be content to just sit and die. They will do something, but some will do something to help themselves. The Lord helps those who help themselves. Amen. If we make the effort, God will respond. Amen. Sitting and moping and worrying is not the way to get out of the valley. Amen. The eagle does not benefit. will never benefit from the state of moping if it chooses a spot where the sun can. They will find this rock and lay on it. They will bathe in the presence of the sun. They will let the sun beam down on them. They will wait. Hallelujah. Keep your head. They will wait. And this scripture says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. It's so interesting to know Glenn, he pointed this out to me. 
this week that, that Noah, it rained for 40 days. Jesus was tempted for 40 days. It will take 40 days for the evil to go through this mulching process. To get all the feathers out and to renew those feathers. I believe that there's 7,000 feathers. Can you imagine the pain that this evil goes through as it plucks out those feathers? I remember a story. There was this eagle that was caged up in this uh, zoo. They had a pretty nice cage. But when this eagle came to this zoo, the zookeepers, they couldn't figure out why the eagle would continue to flap its wings and fly towards the sky. And every time it would get to the top of the cage, it would fall back down, all bruised and beaten. And day after day, this eagle would continue to fly towards the top of the cage, towards the sky. And the eagle would once again fall, all bruised and bloody. And they couldn't figure out why this eagle would keep doing this. Day after day after day, and this uh, wealthy man, he came to the zoo that day, and he looked at one of the zookeepers, and he said, what's wrong with the eagle? He loved America, and he loved what the eagle stood for. And he said, I will buy that eagle. This eagle, it finally, it finally gave up, and it finally just sat in the cage, and gave up and it wouldn't fly no more. Several weeks had gone by and then this man came that I just spoke of. He purchased this eagle. No doubt this eagle gave up. It was in its valley. So when the man wrote the check, purchased this bird, he said, I have no use for this bird. I just wanted to be free. They say that they opened up the top of the cage. And the eagle looked up with this loud voice. It made a sound that echoed through the whole area. You could hear this eagle. And it began to flap its wings. And it began to fly out of the cage. Some people say, why are you so free? He set me free. He set me free. He broke the bond of prison for me. They may say, why do you praise and why do you worship and why do you get happy? He set me free. He set me free. He broke the bonds. Why do you lift your hands? Hallelujah. He set me free. He set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. Why do you lift your hands and shout? Hallelujah. He set me free. He set me free. Why do you dance? Why is there a Jericho march? Hallelujah. Why are you excited about church? Why are you excited about, hallelujah, coming to the house of God on Tuesday night? He set me free. He set me free. Hallelujah. Just like this eagle, we can be free. Hallelujah. I believe I go to a church, hallelujah, that has some people that have been set free. Hallelujah. Have some people that's no longer bound to the prison. Hallelujah. There's no more chains on me. I'm set free. Hallelujah. Why are you set free? Because 2,000 years ago, there was a Jesus, hallelujah, that grabbed the horns of the whipping post, hallelujah, with the crown of thorns upon his head, hallelujah. They put a robe on him, hallelujah. Not only did they put a robe on him, they cast locks for that robe, hallelujah. And when they slashed him with the cat of nine tails, hallelujah, by his stripes I'm healed, hallelujah. They forced him to carry a cross up hill, 
Praise God. They laid him on the cross. They put nails in his hands and nails through his feet. He broke the bond yeah. in prison. I'm set free. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. He was on that cross. Hallelujah. And the sky, the sky grew dark. Hallelujah. And the earth began to shake. And my Jesus, he says, it is finished. Not that it was over, that it was about to begin. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why are you born again? Because he said it is finished. Hallelujah. And when he says it is finished, the veil of the torn was ripped. Hallelujah. Not where no human hand could reach. Hallelujah. Not that God could get out, but I could go in. And on the third day, the stone was rolled away. Why? So I could be set free. Praise God. Are you set free today? Hallelujah. Your valley should be temporary. Praise God. If God be for you, who can be against you? You may say, I'm sad today. Well, joy is coming in the morning. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and praise him. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and worship him. Thank him because he doesn't leave you in the valley. Hallelujah. If you love him and if you learn anything at all today, give the Lord a great big hand. Christian Assembly of God would like to thank you for joining us for this broadcast. You're invited to be a part of our services. Sunday school at 11 a.m., Sunday worship at noon, and Tuesday evening Bible study at 7 p.m. If you would like a free copy of today's broadcast, send your request by email at the address listed at the bottom of the screen. Or you can contact Christian Assembly of God via Facebook or our church's website. Christian Assembly of God a local body of believers with a worldwide vision of reaching the lost with the message of the cross.